are discussing um, the uh, French election campaign now in its final week, how uh, the main candidates are looking at uh, the issue of Europe. Well, with us to talk about it uh, from Brussels is uh, from the uh, Bruegel Institute, uh, Gertram Wolf, also uh, with us here in the studio, Aude Baron, editor of Le Plus, the interactive website of French news magazine Le Nouvel Observateur. Uh, Jacqueline Hénard, a uh, German journalist who's been in France for 15 years, you're telling That's us. Right, yeah. 15 years. Thomas Houdai of uh, Europhile think tank Europa Nova. Thank you for being back with us. Um, we were discussing before the break how uh, the Germans have uh, set forth long-term thinking when it comes uh, to uh, uh, how they rework their economic model in view of uh, the challenges as this aging continent faces. Um, for the French, well, it's uh, short-term thinking is what the general consensus is around this table. Now, five years ago, um, the socialist candidate uh, in, in the fix of things uh, was courting the center between the first and second round, especially. This time around, it's François Hollande, and he's got to keep an eye out for a resurgent far left, the communist-backed Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who, by the way, staged his own mass rally over the weekend, this one in Marseille. I know whoever is elected on the 6th of May, that on the 7th of May, the world of finance will attack France. And this is why the great movement that we are building, aware and therefore reasoned, will take up the struggle in a disciplined manner. Take up the struggle. Gertrand Wolf, your reaction to when you listen to Jean-Luc Mélenchon? Well, my reaction is that, um, you know, rhetorics is one thing, but then the, uh, the action is, is a different thing. You know, it's, it's not that there's a magic bullet out there which would easily, um, you know, to uh, uh, reduce the influence of financial markets on, on what's going on. So, so I think if we want to address th this issue seriously, what we have to discuss about is really forming a, a truly federal European uh, treasury that, you know, backs up governments, etc. And that, that is a very different debate than, I think, the debate that he has in mind. He has in, my, in mind a debate about regulation of financial markets. Now, I, I'm sure that this is a debate that we need to have, but I would also caution against the notion that uh, even a big country like France can, can do this debate by itself. So this is a very, very complicated field, and it's not going to be done by just one country. It's not going to be done by either Germany nor France. Uh, not even the U.S. could do it if they wish to. You really need basically a global consensus on this. So I think for Europe, it's, it's really, I mean, the debate we need to have is a much different debate. We need to have a debate about what's going to be, do we introduce common bonds, government bond, euro bonds, you know, do we have a treasury that uh, actually backs these bonds up? That's the big European debate that we should be having. Uh, Aude Baron, just for people who don't uh, follow French politics closely, they don't even realize sometimes that there's still a communist party, which is quite strong at the local level in this country. How much pull, how much weight will a Jean-Luc Mélenchon have on uh, François Hollande? Well, it's pretty impressive. And first, we just have to question ourselves what's his weight in France beside François Hollande. And well, well, right now, we're wondering, is he going to be the third man in the, in the election? Because what's specific in France is that you have a third movement in, um, uh, in contrary to the United States or Great Britain, where you have uh, only two big parties. And in France, you know, it's not kind of, well, there's a so-called center, but here it's the extreme left. Um, and actually, it's very interesting to, to observe the rise of Jean-Luc Mélenchon, because as it was just said, many people are aware that his program is just unrealistic. But you, ju you just have a feeling that people, they want to dream. And when you question, you know, uh, the people who are supporting Jean-Luc Mélenchon, they admit, but very easily, I know he can't do, you know, what he's saying, but I want to dream. And maybe, you know, in time of crisis, people, they just want, you know, to think that other things are, are possible. It's of course, it's only rhetoric, but maybe right now, today, it's just needed. And compared to um, uh, with François Hollande, what's the weight of Jean-Luc Mélenchon? Well, 
if you look at the polls, Jean-Luc Mélenchon shouldn't be at the second turn. So uh, the stake for him is to influence François Hollande, and his goal is to be the strongest possible at the first round of the presidential election so on Sunday, so that maybe he could be able you know, to negotiate some strategic um, uh, situation in his party. Jacqueline Hénard, is, is the far left in this country more than just a protest vote? More than just dreaming, as Aude was saying? It is a populist left-wing movement. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, they, of course, everybody knows that this is completely unrealistic. Um, but uh, I am impressed to see uh, how strong the vote for the extremes looks to be in this election. Not just Once the extreme again, left. Not just the extreme left, both the right and left, and especially among young people. Uh, if you count the votes for uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, or the probable votes for Jean-Luc Mélenchon and for Marine Le Pen, for the extreme li left and for the extreme right, uh, among the first round voters, the 18 to 24 year old, you come up to 42% of the young people who want to vote for the extremes. Um, and I that think doesn't this, look great for Brussels institutions. It doesn't look great for Brussels, and it doesn't look great for the job that the politicians have been doing in France. Now, Slate's business blogger believes an Hollande win is just what Europe needs. In a posting entitled, The Eurozone Needs Political Chaos, uh, Matt Iglesias writes, uh, France isn't Spain, it has nuclear weapons and a seat on the UN Security Council. The euro could really break up, or else the powers that be in Germany could be forced to undertake the kind of measures that be, would be required to make it work. Thomas Uday, Hollande wins. is a grand wake-up call to all of Europe, and there's a real reform. I think Hollande is uh, quite a realistic guy. You know, he's, uh, he has uh, with him, and he will have to manage uh, the, the uh, really extreme uh, part uh, as a... Uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, but there is also some really uh, left people in, in the Socialist Party. So um, I think he, he will, uh, that's uh, his main challenge, but I think he's uh, probably inside of him more, uh, you know, he has, uh, I think, Jacques Delors gene uh, at some point. Uh, he, he has a... The cautious reformer. Yeah, he, he has ideas of, of Europe, and I... I believe, I hope, uh, that he, if he is elected, he will have a, a real European uh, uh, vision to develop. G Gertrand Wolf, uh, the day a if François Hollande is elected, the day after, uh, do, uh, is there capital flight, uh, Europe's stock markets tanking, or is it, uh, as we were just saying, that the big bang that uh, uh, the institutions need in Brussels? No, I don't think there will be huge capital flights. I mean, uh, I think Hollande, uh, I completely agree, um, Hollande is, is probably a very reasonable uh, person. So, so I, would, I would suppose that, you know, once in office, um, he will probably think very carefully about what is the kind of things we need in Europe what's the kind of things we need in France, and then, you know, act accordingly. So I'm, I'm an optimist there, actually. Now, it's a, it's a funny campaign because and we can show you the polls, first of all. Uh, there was, uh, there was a, a bit of a bump uh, in the past couple of weeks for Nicolas Sarkozy. That now seems to have stalled with Hollande pulling back in front in the first round. Uh, this is a poll that uh, came out last Friday. And in the second round, increasing the gap. We were talking at the end of last week of a 10-point lead. Wow, look at that. Now it's, uh, it's gone up even further for François Hollande, this one of the tracking polls. And again, it's a strange campaign um, uh, because there's high stakes, um, and a, the specter of high unemployment, a listless growth, a currency under threat. Yet, pollsters remind us that uh, if 84.5% of voters turned out for the first round last time around, it was to make amends for the previous election, where apathy enabled the far right to shut out the socialists in 2002. It's different for two reasons. This campaign doesn't inspire enthusiasm, and also because prospects seem bleak for the people. And the two main candidates, at least those who are heading the polls, are not explaining how French society will change after their election. Aude Baron, we've just heard how the extremes are what's uh, stirring the most enthusiasm in this election. Um, 
with uh, at Le Plus, are you feeling uh, that there's less, a lot less enthusiasm, or the French still politics crazy? No, it's obvious you just have less enthusiasm. And when you observe the reaction on the internet, it's very interesting to uh, to see that um, people d d uh, who are defending Nicolas Sarkozy or François Hollande, they don't defend ideas. They just spend most of their time uh, trying to to criticize the the opposition. So as if you know their candidate wasn't a choice; it was a choice by default. And the the goal was just you know uh, to make the other go forward so that you can win. But it's not you know it's a win by default and not by choice. And regarding to Jean-Luc Mélenchon, there was a real gap. Um, it's very interesting to look at when you look at Google Trends and when you look on Google uh, the research of the of the users. And after. Um, it was after March the 18th, most of the, so before March the 18th, most of the users, they were typing Nicolas Sarkozy and François Hollande. And after March 18th, uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, he just went in front of François Hollande. This is when he staged a big rally in Paris. Uh, it was just a few days before. Mm. And so you can see that the there interest toward Jean-Luc Mélenchon is growing. So it doesn't mean, you know, he's going to be elected. Of course, it's not a poll, but it just shows that there is a real interest toward Jean-Luc Mélenchon because he's just different. And uh, the supporters of Jean-Luc Mélenchon, they are very positive towards him. And when you read the comments, you know, they're defending his ideas and they don't criticize that much François Hollande or Nicolas Sarkozy. Thomas Uday, uh, stakes higher than ever, and yet voter disenchantment or uh, uh, only enthusiastic about anti-establishment parties. Again, what does that say for the future of this country and the future of Europe? For me, the conclusion is that we're at the end of the cycle. You know, it may, it may be, and I hope that it will be the last national election because uh, we are in a different world and, and the candidates didn't change. Of course, it's difficult, and we know the, the, the gap that there is also between the European Union, the, its institution, its image, and the citizens. But it, it will be uh, one of the challenges of the next president, also to uh, uh, get back in, in the race and have a, a citizen uh, recreating uh, enthusiasm with, with the citizens. And uh, like uh, Aude said, of course, the, the, um, the situation of Jean-Luc Mélenchon is very interesting because he's telling a story. The other candidates has no; they don't have any, uh, you know, st storytelling about the country and about uh, the future of our continent. That's uh, something very important that is missing. All right. So uh, in another enthusiasm killer. Uh, many French uh, political journalists will tell you are the rules. No U.S. style first round debates in this country, but carefully timed appearances. We're now in the official campaign period, and each of the 10 candidates running gets the exact same airtime. So, like, for instance, uh, you're watching images from last week, a television show that aired on state television. During the last week of the campaign, Nicolas Sarkozy gets as much airtime as U.S. fringe politician and Lyndon LaRouche supporter Jacques Cheminade. Cheminade, whose campaign promises include colonizing space. The rules a bit quirky, Jacqueline, and are, and are those enthusiasm killers as well? Uh, I, would, I would imagine that the French are used to this kind of exercise. Yeah? Uh, and actually, I would think that they rather appreciate the possibility to listen to different uh, um, ideas, because the projects of the so-called small candidates are often discussed rather seriously. Um, I do not think that anybody really expects Mr. Cheminad to win if they vote for Mr. Cheminad or Eva Jolie or all the other candidates whose names are not known and will never be known beyond the borders of France. Uh, but nevertheless, it's part of the political culture. And in so far, this is just France, you know. F as to the strict regulations that the CSR, the regulatory body, imposes. The broadcasting this, authority. The broadcasting authority. I would say that this is a bit uh, old, out of time, outdated. Yeah? A little bit out of date. I, th I think that the French appreciate the, um, the, um, the show. They appreciate it as a show. When you look at the number of people who watch the different pe persons during the debates, because all 10 have the same time on air, uh, I was quite amazed how many people watched these candidates who have no whatsoever, who stand no chance to be elected. Huh?
And uh, they're are a bit out of date to, to get around the rules. Uh, there's always the web. Uh, we know that um, uh, people will be going on the websites of a Swiss and Belgian uh, uh, newspapers and televisions to get uh, early results on election day. Uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon also using the web. He has France's answer to super PAC money with uh, supporters filming a video clip that's gone viral. On vient d'un bête pourri ou d'un appart sexy Tant qu'on est trop stylé comme tu l'es, on peut t'aimer Uh, Aude Baron, does the web make moot all this regulation in the official campaign period of uh, making sure that each candidate gets equal time? Well, that's why it's a bit weird because you have the regulation on television and radio and nothing on the internet. And that's why, for example, this week we're trying uh, with other media on the internet to organize a debate between the candidates who, are, who wants to. Uh, so it means you can organize a debate which is going to be filmed, we hope so, uh, on the internet as long as you don't have any broadcast on television. So it's a bit absurd, you know, you have just different rules. So you can just observe that the candidates, they, uh, like you just say, Jean-Luc Mélenchon and that video just proves it. Um, they are very organized on the internet and it's very interesting. Jean-Luc Mélenchon is really a, a great case to, uh, to analyze because as w whenever you publish an article with Jean-Luc Mélenchon in the title, whatever inside it is the article, you, you can be sure that you will have thousands of readings and so many comments because all the supporters of Jean-Luc Mélenchon are coming on the internet. And it's, you know, since a few weeks, you really feel that the movement is just growing for him. All right, and with the rise of the far left, far right, could we have surprises on election day? Could the polls be wrong? You know, the, the, the polls are indication, and since um, April 2002, when Jean-Marie Le Pen, so on the extreme right, um, was uh, elected for the second term, you know, everyone, you know, just remained quite careful, and we listened to the, to the polls, but, well, we can always expect a surprise. All right, surprises there may be. And by the way, you can catch France 24's coverage of election night from 7.30 p.m. on Sunday evening. Yes, we are in the final week. Aude Baron, I want to thank you. I want to thank uh, Thomas Uday. I also want to thank uh, Jacqueline Hénard. And from Brussels, Guntran Wolf for being with us here in the France 24 debate. Stay with us. Catherine Nicholson is next with business.